celebrity autobiographies. I mean, there is so much dirt. This guy met his famous wife when she was 16 years old. They've split up now, but she's probably the one more likely to date 16-year-olds. This two-time Oscar winner once said that a day without making love is a day wasted. This lady rejected the advances of two presidents, but not Frank Sinatra. And this man has co-starred with Liza Minnelli and Raquel Welch and has been married to the same woman for 25 years. I don't know what the hell he's doing here. <laughs> Plus, we are going to have a surprise guest later who has been married nine times and is probably one of the only women ever to steal a man from Liz Taylor. Today, the hottest stories from the hottest celebrity autobiographies. Please welcome Sonny Bono, Shelley Winter, Sheila McRae, and Michael York. <laughs> Great. I can't wait to talk to all of you, but I'm going to start with you, Shelley, because you... I knew it. Because <laughs> you're right here. Okay. Well, you know, you have two books, Shelley 1 and Shelley 2. And I'm working on Shelley 3. <laughs> Which is phenomenal. I couldn't even... There wouldn't even be one book about me. It'd be so boring. But you... I don't messed think around so. I with know a little bit about your life. You, oh, it's boring compared to you. You <laughs> messed around with some very, very famous guys. What do you mean, for, messed around? For, uh, well, you know... Like Errol Flynn and Burt Lancaster and lots. And don't you, don't you, when you write these books, don't you ever worry that you're going to get in trouble talking about all this? I'm a grandmother. I'm just a grandma. I want to show you a picture of my new grandson, okay? Uh, all right? Okay, how, but I don't know how you can... Well, here, just get, where's the you picture? You want to see? I want to see? see. Wait a minute, here. Oh, this here. is a cute Look, one. Look, five yeah. months old. Look at... Where are we? Right there, can Sweet. you see the grandbaby? Oh, what's his name? Ari, oh, Joseph. Ari, oh. Oh. Now, God bless Ari Joseph. But, now, Grandma, I you were a busy any, young thing. I can't remember any of the things I did before I was <laughs> 30. Oh, stop <laughs> now. <laughs> Tell us what it was like. Burt Lancaster, and like he was the love of your life, it said in your book. No, no, no. My no? husband, my uh, the grandfather of this baby, was the love of my life, Vittorio Gassman. But unfortunately, he lived in Italy, and I lived in America in Hollywood. And uh, unless we met in St. Louis, we had no way to be married. <laughs> While you were married, you lived apart. <laughs> well, we did. We had thirty trips. We put all Italian business. But uh, we never discussed where we were going to live. We had a romance, and then we got married, and we had a baby, and then we got divorced. So that's so. Is that we... when all this juicy stuff happened? No, before or after, not during. <laughs> Do we have, we have? I could only be faithful to one man at a time. Well, that's good. Yes. But you were busy now, yeah. and I did read that you were crazy about Burt Lancaster. We all uh, were. Sure <laughs> were you? Up. You read was that he book. Like, was he the big stuff, Burt Lancaster? I mean, was uh, he? he was yes, he was an extraordinary man. He was kind and lovely. I was very young, and uh, I had hoped that we would get married. But his uh. wife had other ideas. <laughs> <laughs> See, those wives can get in the way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you know, while I'm thinking about it, what is your favorite role that you ever played in any one of your movies? Because I know which one mine would be. But A Place in the Sun. Mine too. Which was oh, American Tragedy. <laughs> now, it also says... God, you have what? a wonderful makeup department. Really. Um, Thank great God. Makeup. That's all yeah, I need to say, Yes, last week I was 70, and I think I only look about 60. Whoa. Is that right? Lighting. We must thank those lighting people, lighting. too. And, you know, 
gasoline. There's, I don't know, there's something in Hollywood, you're just not allowed to get old. Maybe men are allowed because to. Because people want to remember you the way they remember you. When I was size 10? Yeah, that's the way they want to remember you. Right. Tell us about living with Marilyn Monroe. What was that like? Oh, that, that was extraordinary. You know, everybody paints her as such a sad girl. When, she was, when we lived together for about a year, she wasn't. We had a lot of fun. We used to uh, go down Hollywood Boulevard where there were a lot of movie theaters. We used to play movie-itis. We would start at 10 o'clock in the morning and see who could see the most movies by 8 o'clock at night. How, what ages were you when you, we lived together? Uh, early 20s, early 20s. She just had uh, finished working in the factory. She just changed her, it was during the second, no, the end of the Second World War. And she just changed her name from Norma Jean. And uh, she used to practice, uh, you know, both of us, you know, uh, hot sayings, like if uh, we were, wanted to get all the publicity we could. After my book, I try to get as little publicity as I can. <laughs> well, that's years well, later. So you, are you ashamed that you wrote these things? No. Uh, I, think it's, uh, I think it's an accurate uh, sort of telling of what a starlet's life was like from uh, 1945 till uh, the first one Oh, boy, uh, I missed the boat. I was born too late because my starlet <laughs> years were just born as hell. You got married too soon. You knew, uh, maybe. Well, that doesn't stop anybody. Sheila, you knew Marilyn too, didn't you? Oh, yes, I did. Not as well as Shelley. Mm -hmm. I must say, one of my favorite films that Shelley did was A Double Life. I thought she was absolutely brilliant in that one. Thank you but very I, much. No, it's true. That's uh, my but first I did picture. know Marilyn. And Marilyn, I thought... What Shelley said, I thought she was charming and wonderful. And when I met her, she was hanging out with Sidney Skolsky, whom I'm yeah. sure Shelley knew. And she came down because Gordon McRae, my ex-husband, now passed away, God rest his soul, was doing a nightclub act. And he needed people to read like this is your life. So one night, Jeff Chandler brought her down and put her on. And Gordon said, she, I can't hear her. Get her off. I want actresses to speak out <laughs> loud. But she would get so frightened that she would whisper. And it's I would take her to acting classes. I was studying with Charles Lawton. And she would lose her voice. She would talk like that Aww. because she was so scared. Oh, you I didn't true. know you auditioned to play Scarlett O'Hara. Did everybody? No, not exactly. I, <laughs> I, was, I was very young. And uh, I had read Scarlett O'Hara. I'd read the book twice. And uh, I read in the newspaper that they were looking for Scarlett in the Grand Central Plaza. They, they were there. And George Cukor was auditioning young girls. This is when they thought they were going to use an unknown. So I wore my sister's dress and my mother's hat and high heels, which I couldn't walk into. And I walked in his office and looked at Cukor. And I said, I'm the only girl to play Scarlett O'Hara. I had a New York accent. <laughs> the only girl? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and year, many years later, when I did A Double Life, we went through the whole, I never told him that I had had an audition or he had seen me. When the picture was all over, I said, George, do you remember me, me from a long time ago? And he looked at me and said, oh, my God, my Brooklyn Scarlet. Oh. And he, <laughs> well, and, and, and Sonny, you were married what certainly has turned out to be probably one of the biggest sex symbols in the world. And I can't, well, I want to talk to you when we get back. We're okay. Gonna, we're going to see what it was like okay. to be married to Cher and to lose Cher. National Fitness Sale. Save on exercise cycles, steppers, skiers, weight machines, and more. This lifestyle or treadmill with auto incline and speeds up to 8 miles per hour, only $4.99.99. The National Fitness Sale, only at Sears. Drixoral is. Sudafed isn't. Drixoral is. Contact isn't. 12-hour long prescription strong Drixoral is the one cold medicine pharmacist have recommended most for 10 years. Take it from your pharmacist. Take Drixoral. You did use crazy glue, right? Right. Let me down. And it fixed everything here, right? Right. Oh. Didn't fix your broken promise, did it? Well, I said I was sorry. Let me down. No! I just fixed that. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> did I mention only crazy glue has this stay fresh crazy case? Yes. And if I ever get down... Hardly worry about that. Oh. I wonder if that last chap got down. Crazy glue. For things that are broken. Except promises. 
Pain like this could mean you have sensitive teeth. Here's a remarkable solution. Introducing Aquafresh Sensitive. It targets the cause of the pain. Microscopic holes that let hot and cold shoot straight to the nerve. Aquafresh Sensitive soothes the nerve and helps stop the pain. And with fluoride and that great Aquafresh taste, it can replace your everyday toothpaste. So you may never have sensitive teeth pain again. New Aquafresh Sensitive soothes the nerve, helps stop the pain. For thousands of great sale items, these are the best weeks to buy at Sears. Right now, get Sears best-selling tires, Guardsman Response XLs, for as little as $19.99 each. That's right, as low as $19.99 each for Sears best-selling Guardsman all-season tires. You can have them installed in less than an hour, and they even come with a 45,000-mile warranty. No wonder Sears is America's number one tire store. But hurry, Sears best weeks to buy end soon. gives better dish than my guest today. We're talking with some Hollywood legends, really. Um, and uh, you all have such wonderful stories. Um, but Sonny, I want to talk to you about what in the world did Cher think when she read your book? Um, she didn't say a lot, and she <laughs> hasn't since. Uh, in Silence fact, can be deadly, you know? <laughs> in fact, I heard uh, she's not talking to me now. Uh, uh, she, didn't, she really didn't say much. And, and actually, the book was... 20 years, almost 20 years after, and the whole purpose of the book for me was to close that chapter of my life. I wanted to move on, you know, and, and unfortunately, uh, I, we almost became Siamese twins. It was Sonny and Cher, Sonny and Cher, and to get back my identity as an individual. And so uh, this was really adios, that's the end of that. Not that, that it wasn't fun and I didn't enjoy every minute of it, but now I have a beautiful wife and I have two new children and a totally different life and life goes on. So, so is that the reason you guys write these books? I, I don't know why other people... We write them for money. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, I didn't. Uh, That's the uh, reason you wrote, wrote yours because you really wanted to just uh, say yeah, goodbye to and, everything. And, uh, but you said some terrible things in there. Oh, like no, you I said you thought she was gay when you first met her? No, no, I never said that. No, never said that. That you weren't sure if she liked guys or gals? No, I didn't I say that. You, you have to read it again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> didn't say either one of those things. No? Uh-uh. Uh, but uh, w what, what happened is, you know, for 20 years we've been apart and only one person spoke about two people and it was uh, one version for 20 years I'd see it on TV I'd see it in interviews and after a while you go you know I'd sure like to get my side of this deal out and probably I, I wouldn't have never dealt with that had I not got barraged for 20 years but I, you know we're at, we're at an age now where everybody has a right to give their opinion as well. Did you know when you met her that she would turn out to be what she is today? I mean, did you know that then? Did you see that? What is she today? Well, just a, probably one of the biggest stars on the planet. I, I always knew Cher was talented and, and had um, a particular talent. And um, I knew she was destined to start him because uh, you could tell that she wanted that more than anything in her life, yes. Did she? Was that part of the problem in your relationship, did you feel? problem in our relationship was that we probably got together for the wrong reasons and we stayed together for the wrong reasons and pretty soon I was probably a mentor and she was a student and uh, I was a father and she was a daughter I was a brother she was a sister and we never really uh, related as a husband and wife which which is something that I had to mature in the marriage I have now I'm a husband and a father and a politician <laughs> and a, okay uh, I don't call myself a politician, but well. I, am, I am. You're right. I'm in a politician. I hate politicians, but uh, I, I'm. I'm <laughs> I, you're in it, I'm, though, big I'm guy. I'm in the political <laughs> arena. Uh, I'm not trying to to make less of that, but I, I just wanted to like clean the slate and move on to this life that I have now. What about you, Michael? Why did you write your book? You're like Mr. I'm Conservative, perfect guy, married to the same lady 25 years. Is that so unusual? In oh, this well. business? Yes. Yeah? No, no, no. I really think, you know, we have to set the record straight. I think we only hear about the, uh, you know, the unpleasant...